weight these kids these days. Mm-hmm. When I back in my day, you'd been there for half an hour downloading Fighting Spirit. Uh, Actually, back still back when I remember, um, uh, you know, on uh, uh, playing Warcraft Three Dota, if you didn't download the map be- ahead of time, you were auto kicked. Like a <laughs> box that looked to see if there was a DL number, and it auto kicked you. Really? It oh man, that's vicious, draconian. <clears throat> that is pretty vicious. The, the map All right, we changed now. every day, though, unfortunately. So it was like there was always patches. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty rough. So you have to just constantly stay on top of it. That's right. All right, on Damn. this fighting spirit match, let's hear it. All right, spawning into the top right-hand corner. I'm going to do Koga first just to get some, some equality in this house. We've got the brown Terran, Mr. N.W. Koga. And in the bottom left-hand corner, spawning in as the yellow Zerg, we have Mr. Julia. Oh, and a, and a guest appearance by True Touch here before he did leave the game. Uh, I just want to uh, give a shout out to Toaster. Thank you for donating. You are the bomb. You are not going to be cheated here. Uh, we will give you that huge shout out for donating. And if anybody else donated, please uh, post in the Twitch chat itself so I can give you some mad shout outs. Elegant, tell Toaster how awesome he is. Toaster, you, you are deeply awesome. Uh, if there was a way for me to give you an e-hug right now, uh, I would give you I would give you an e-hug. In, in fact, you know, just keep donating. One day I'll just fly right over to wherever the hell you are and give you a massive hug. Actually, yeah, that if, won't happen. If I can't, donated I can't enough money, Elegant will fly to your home. <laughs> I said that now. <laughs> that, that's, that's out the there. It's like the time when I promised to eat my hat, and it just went, it just went ugly really, really fast. Honestly. <laughs> but well, yes, you'll, you'll be like um. You know how, how you set up those donation websites and you like GoFundMe and and so yeah. we would GoFundMe Fight Club and the fifty thousand dollar prize is an elegant flies to your house. <laughs> yeah, I expect food when I get there though. Let's not mess around. Yeah, and you I'm gotta a picky feed eater. him. This man's an eater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Airport food, just it's just not the best. Do, do you enjoy uh, the same foods that Julia enjoys? Well, I can't. I can't say I've tried all of them, but a good a good bit of shark horse never goes amiss. A good shark horse, a pulled oh, shark horse. So, do you eat the shark horse tartare because it's such a rare meat? <laughs> you almost don't want to cook it. Yeah, well, I know it is quite it is delicate, but you know, I just like I sometimes just like to smother it in barbecue sauce and just you know get get it really thoroughly cooked oh, and just oh, so it's yeah. kind of falling apart. Make a big fat sandwich out of that thing, shark horse sandwich. Now, is barbecue sauce a big thing from where you're from? Because I'm in the south of, of the United States, and, and so barbecue is huge. It's everywhere. Uh, uh, it's I can't say it's a big thing here. Um, it, I, and to be honest, I hardly know. I'm actually a vegetarian, believe it or not. So I don't stay up with the with the news on barbecue sauce. Ah, uh, so um, so it's 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 uh, broccoli, cauliflower, and shark horse, which is the only one you're willing to give up your values for. Yeah, exactly. Shark horse is the single meat that I'm happy to eat. Um, n- none of them makes the cut. Yeah, yeah, because they're endangering plankton anyway, you know, because shark <laughs> horses are, are uh, vegetarians too. Imagine, imagine seeing that thing coming. You would run a mile. No, no wonder it's on the verge of extinction. Well, would you I would shoot that. Run a mile on water or ground because that thing's equally fast on both terrains. Yeah, I would leap up a tree. I tell you, that's what I would do. I would be straight <laughs> up the nearest tree. Yeah, like but, a you know, a I, I can see it now though. The the fourth movie, Shark Horse Native. <laughs> that's gonna be one of those really crummy, low budget B movie things, like. Uh, uh, you know the one where the sh- giant shark jumps out of the water and eats the airplane? I don't know what that was called. Uh, probably, shark op- probably Apocalypse Jaws or something. Five. Yeah, that just killed the franchise. Yeah. Meanwhile, in the in the game of Brood War, we have some zergling pressure coming in from Julia. And Koga is actually doing a pretty nice job of microing Marines back to defend that. Uh, losing some health off his Marines, but it looks like he might be able to beat this without losing a single one of those Marines. But the Zerglings do get into the run by those slow links just plodding their way on into the main, see what they can see. Uh, and it doesn't look like they're really going to be able to do too much damage, excuse yeah, me. They uh, may and... not even get this single SCV here because those three Marines are now on the hunt. One single Zergling just stranded in the side of this main base. And it will go yeah. down to an SCV, so a pitiful death. 
pitiful indeed. And those Zerglings managed to do absolutely uh, nothing whatsoever. Um, we haven't seen any complaints of lag just yet, but hold your hold your horses, hold your shark horses. I'm sure it's coming uh, every time a Zergling gets lost. Um, <laughs> and we have a creep colony happening right now for Julia as well. So he's clearly now uh, aware of the of the danger posed to him. He doesn't want to be making more Zerglings. He doesn't want to spend uh, the lava on those. He just wants to get his drone count. Uh, working away to take him into the mid game, so he's just throwing down a sunken to make sure that, that he's safe for now and doesn't have to invest anymore oh, in a standing army. Oh, did you see those Marines? Elegant. So Kogut's playing really smart, just understanding the map layout here, and the the Overlord is up there, just barely out of the way of that like uh, peninsula that the Marines gathered up towards, and so Kogut was actually going on the hunt to maybe get some early food killing um, in the game. Very nice, and that's so that's always something you see with more with the more. So sort of knowledgeable players and more experienced players, you see them sort of really try and take advantage of these these quirks of the map and try and try and eke out everything that they possibly can. Uh, and Kogut, of course, wants a player who would do that. Um, but yeah, the yeah, Overlord's it, it, still hovering around the map. It's so much trouble too for a Zerg player if they lose their Overlord. If they, if if they lose one of their first three or four Overlords, the game is just drastically changed at that point too. It's so hard to, uh, you know, yeah, that's the really tough. Count and and the tech when when you have something stall your food count like that. Yeah, absolutely. We do have a, a scouting SCV out and about. I'm just seeing what's up. I've got those two links just chasing it down. Uh, and Julia actually really going in early with the uh, with the extra creep, creep colonies. I wouldn't expect he's going to make them into sunken straight away. Actually, he is. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, just going uh, straight for it on both of them here. And I want to apologize. I I, uh, I had my, my mouse locked in on the screen for a second, so I think I gave some viewers for just a split second there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> it's some bad stuff. Yeah, uh, God forbid we, any of our viewers die. It's important that we keep the viewer count as high as possible here. So uh, the plus one upgrade, uh, just passing the halfway point here, you can see that the uh, with the rank upgrade coming down for these Marines here too. And just trying to get these, uh, the bio forces prepared for the Mutalist uh, that's uh, inevitably coming here, as you can see the Spire finishing up in the natural base. Yep, and we can see that those uh, that those two sunken colonies were actually cancelled. He didn't make the full sunkens just yet. He's keeping them as creep colonies for now, uh, just in preparation for those marines. Throwing down a fourth creep colony as well, um, presumably just to sort of make his, allow him to be a little bit more free with his mutilist movements, get those extra sunken colonies, so he can feel safer with his with his defense at home. Also, with four barracks pumping away, uh, those that marine count really rises fast. It, it gets out of hand quickly. So uh, Julia just choosing to be safe rather than sorry with the with the four sunkens. Like last game, he was just I felt very careless, very poor yeah. on his scouting information. Yeah, he, uh, he was just way, way, way too careless in terms of getting yeah. the sunkens out. But you know, having four sunkens, that's a no, pretty solid investment there. That's three drones, and look at that as scan comes down. And so Koga can even say, well, I'll just wait until I find your third base, and then pressure yeah. there since you put so much into your natural. Yeah, and Koga seems to be calling it quite well. He's just sort of hovering in that spot in between uh, in between the natural and the third base. So it looks like he's, he's going to be ready to pounce on that uh, when when the time comes. And he's well defended back at home as well. Kogut with a nice control group of Marines up on the high ground. He's got some good missile turret coverage in his natural mineral line as well. The Mutus is now coming in trying to do some damage, but they are taking a, a lot of missile turret hits right there and doing practically nothing. They're going to run the risk of getting caught at this marine group yeah as well. that's they one of those really careful. bad spots to move into you have to be really careful when you go from the natural uh, and you head towards the ramp area because that's where all the macro marines are going to start gathering for yeah how, how does uh, julia have the time to type out such elaborate i literally don't reasons? know I literally don't know, and I don't know how how he always feels like the game lags. I don't I don't know how that can be the case. I don't think I've ever casted Julia when he didn't complain about lag. Literally, right. literally and, and ever. And these guys live so close to each other that they could probably be landing. So yeah. Also, <laughs> there's, there's no, no way that lag affects only one player and not the other. It can happen, you know. If it lags for one, it lags for all. 
Uh, but Julia coming back in here to, uh, to try and deal some damage into the main. Uh, his muses ooh, almost getting caught by the marine group running back in there, um, but not not quite happening. Koga not quite managing to get the catch on those. Uh, and it's just ticking along nicely for Koga here. Yeah. We can see now that he's adding his natural gas. Uh, so he's going to start transitioning into a slightly more mech orientated sort of play. We've got the siege tank already set to pop out. We've got a starport coming up as well for him. So so we're going to see him start to get, get the vessels moving. Uh, and get get you know, probably into I'm that really, mid-game. really thinking about this though, Elgin, is that, that uh, Julia only just now, uh, within the past few minutes, actually gathered his mutas up. He, oh, he hasn't man. been putting in that good, concerted effort to actually macro, uh, micro his units as a mutas one. Uh, and instead yeah. of a little bit sloppy with it. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. It just seems a little bit lax. Um, but this is nice from Koga. Look at this. He's just hidden away uh, at Julia's third base. Just ready to pass out. As soon as it goes, in come the Marines. And they're going to be able to take that down before Julia can get anything over there. These lurkers coming in the back, they're going to be utterly uh, utterly helpless to stop that hatchery from going down. And the hatchery goes down pretty much immediately. Julia just Oh, but again. look at all the lurkers coming in here. She's hoping to get some kills here. Um, and that was a nice pullback onto the high ground here. So Koga not taking a lot of losses. You know, this is something yeah. that Flash did just just recently in his team battle on fighting spirit he went with this five racks play he showed that he could apply this pressure and take out down um you know any any base third base that zerg takes outside of this closer third is really really tough on a map like fighting spirit and and so yeah. that's where we're seeing the same trouble that koga is causing for julia and we have those muses going in flying to do a little bit of damage into the main and having to fly right back out again they didn't even kill up that missile turret which is still on yellow health so not even going to burn down and the muses just kind of they have managed to do some damage now they have managed to catch a decent number of scvs in the natural but even still not a catastrophic number we can see that koga is still extremely well saturated and actually he needs to be looking at a third base very soon given that his uh, that his main mineral line is almost entirely depleted already uh, so, so he's going to be stretching out fairly soon. I'd imagine once that sight and vessel comes in, <clears throat> excuse me, then uh, then he's going to be getting yeah. getting basically. Yeah, actually, too right. often though we see uh, with Koget that after off these two bases that he has the success of taking down the third and knowing that you don't have that at your proper timing, that he'll just go ahead get a mm. couple science vessels and then win uh, without even building a command center to take a third. So he's, he's completely yeah. greedy like that. Once you have a couple tanks and, and your science vessels, this push is almost too strong for Zerg to hold the natural without really good lurker positioning. Yeah, and th that is an extremely greedy approach. Uh, and we can see how that would really only work for a Terran of a good level because it's not worth it unless you are able to keep your money so low. And when you're producing su such a marine heavy army, that is difficult. They produce so fast. That it takes it takes some really quite on point macro to be able to keep your your cash down uh, as low as Koga is able to do uh, when you're producing so heavily uh, a marine focused army. And now we've got a big push coming across the middle of the map from Koga. He has yeah, uh, one, a one really good number of marines. Two, the, the tank out unusually higher. You, also, he he usually pushes out with two tanks um, for that earlier timing here for pressure. But he's had the luxury of getting out four tanks. And this makes it real tough. Uh, Julia still has a few mutas alive, and that's where the mutalists can help out here too, is if they can kind of backstab and pick off a few of these tanks. Otherwise, this push will remain too strong. Yeah, but Julia does manage to get a decent position against this marine medic army, and Koga doesn't even stim, but it doesn't even matter. He's able to somehow deal with those with those lurkers coming in without stimming. Oh, big wow, lurkers going off. Wow, that shot was really bad on those marines. But Julia also throwing away all of his muters pretty much needlessly just to desperately try uh, and hold the back the tide for a little bit longer. Because as we can see, his defiler mount. Oh, and, oh, you know, and let's gets, blame yeah. the grainy map. <laughs> oh, the grainy, the grainy map. Oh. <laughs> all right. Well, it seems unless it's a cheese, Koga just can't lose the standard play. And, yeah. and, you know, I try and make an argument about, like, certain maps are needed to really help Zerg out. But it comes down to it. We need to have that secret Zerg meeting where all the top Zergs get together and they say, let's solve this mess because ZBT is really going Terran favorite these days. Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, and in that game, it just... 
it, it was stark. I mean, it was really stark how, how the Terran was just able to defend the Mutilus, not take too much damage, build up this, this massive ball of stuff and go and kill the Zerg. But having said that, we can't take it as entirely indicative. There, there was a lot that Julia, of course, did do wrong that game. So um, it, it's not like we saw Julia play a perfect game. Uh, and and still lose anyway. His scouting information once again in the early mid game was lacking. He should have known that those marines were out on the map, and he should have been doing something about them uh, with with his mutilus. He had the force to do so. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. he needed to be more as of that. And 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 ultimately his attacks on the natural base weren't good. His uh, yeah. his muta hits weren't perfect, and and that's something where everybody keeps saying if we have Jadon back and he can get his Muta Micro back, then he can prove that at the highest tier of premium Muta control, then you can actually pressure and do damage on the main and natural of the Terran. Mm, yeah. And that, that would be good that would be good to see because it, there, there is there is a lot of doubt going around about about whether the, the matchup has reached some kind of group kind of imbalance but also in that vein as well we're seeing a lot more lurker openings we in in the recent korean tournaments especially we've seen we've seen really the focus go over to lurkers from mutilus it seems like people really are catching on and are trying to sort of to, to readjust the meta game uh, to reflect that right yeah and that's why i'm hoping that i i ultimately want to see a lurker shift because i think it's so fascinating to see a lurker play um, you know, come, come into fruition in early game, seeing drop overlords come early, and a game yep. that, that allowed Jadong to beat Flash was just way too cool. Alright, yep. we're, gonna, we're gonna switch to the next, uh, next uh, Julia fact here, and uh, we'll be back in one minute. So elegant, I gotta know. Are are you a big fan of uh, the map Python? I I have to say I I am not a big fan. Although I like it more these days than I used to. Oh, why is that? What what changed? Is it because it's not played ad nauseum? I'm one of those people too who actually like loves things that were trendy like four years later, but it's <laughs> trendy at the time. Yeah, the the opposite hipster. You just like to be late to the party. Exactly. Yeah. Like this, uh, like this fisherman's hat that I'm wearing. Uh, this was clearly <laughs> a popular '90s outfit hat, and that I'm now just toting these days. Yeah, you like to be cool after the fact. Exactly. You're still cool when when everyone else is just on fatty rubbish. No, Python. I've I've had an odd relationship with that map. I, I, I quite enjoy it now because it actually you can do some funky things with it. You've got these island bases, and a lot of people just don't really take those into account when they're playing. So actually, you can do some fun stuff. Uh, and I just don't like that there's sort of an, such an established meta game on on the map. You know, you kind of know what each race is probably going to do, and that that bothers me. I can't quite express why, but it bothers me. Yeah, I, I do love um I, I love the close by air uh situation that it sets up if you have those close spawns because by yeah. time it actually is a pretty good distance even if you spawn either yeah. both spawns bottom left or top right but but by air whether it be Mutilus and ZBT uh shuttle play Reavers can be really dangerous DT yeah. by shuttle uh, or just drop ships and it just creates all this really crazy air atmosphere. Yeah, because it's a ridiculously short distance. If if you are if you are spawned next to one another, you, you just hop right over. You you could practically ferry an, an army over there with just one shuttle if you wanted. It wouldn't even take too much time. Uh, there's there's all sorts of nonsense you can get up to. So, so that, yeah. that's a fun element to the map, certainly. 
And and then, you know, since we're talking about trendiness, honestly, I'm not someone who's into uh, strangling tigers to death like this python we see at the bottom left. <laughs> is, is this something, have you been a tiger or a python hunter at any point in your life, Elliot? You, you know, I can't say either of those things is particularly big in England these days. Um, we're a bit low on both tigers and pythons, so those that we do have, we tend to try and preserve. You know, uh, if actually, I went down to the I, I zoo... I do have a zoo here in Jacksonville that, has, <laughs> that contains a python and a tiger. <laughs> well, I live in London, so, you know, I've got access to pythons and tigers. Yeah, I can get pythons and tigers, but I, I don't think it would be... I don't think it, it'd be it, wait, 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 wait. So is there's like there's this giant black market for tigers and pythons in the bowels of London? <laughs> not, not quite what I meant. Probably. That, I mean, you can get anything if you look hard enough. But I live just up the road from London Zoo. I actually run past London Zoo. I go, I go for my runs. I go down to Regent's Park and I run around and I see the giraffes uh, and some monkeys and things. And I think I even see some tigers. So I do, I do have tiger access. That um, is too cool. Can you do your best tiger impression on stream? You didn't ask me beforehand. Uh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do a tiger. It's just terrible. Oh, I didn't know if you were going to go cuter and put like paws up. <laughs> yeah, All right, there just... we go. We've got some good gift moments for later. All right, let's get into <laughs> game number four. So this is four, the kind right? of thing yeah, that yeah. gets you photoshopped into Korean female Korean casters' faces. This is the kind of shenanigans. <laughs> oh, you reminded me. This is I need to contact the Star Girl, the um, the one that hosts the Africa Star Leagues. Uh, I'm gonna get her to take a picture with Flash for the name, uh, Flash for the Wind's name on a on a card that she holds. Uh, oh, that'd be sweet. I would do it. That'd be awesome. And then afterward, I will Photoshop your face on the girl. So, he oh, <laughs> man. you're going to create another international incident. <laughs> you know, I actually am in contact with Love TV. I was trying to get her involved in uh, the KCM Legend matches. Um, oh, really? Uh, um, I guess like seven months ago or so. Um, but she's pretty cool and she wants to have a bigger role. Um, and she's like one of the, the most prominent female figures in StarCraft right now. Yeah, so so she's still quite active, huh, on, on her channel. Yeah, it, yeah, it's it's hard. Um, the reason why I was going after her too is because let me go ahead and uh, switch over to the proper scene here. Um, is that that she she doesn't have a lot of money herself, but she draws in a mm. lot of sponsors and creates a lot of good sponsorship matches while she has good relationships yeah. with all the players. So I think that's kind of a valuable asset to have. Whereas a lot of the professional players, Certainly. they don't know how to pull together like sponsored tournaments as well, and and really you know organize something big with all this extra money that people are throwing at them. Yeah, I want to talk about that in just a second. I'll uh, I'm going to shout out the spawns though. First, in the top left hand corner, we have the orange zerg, uh, Julia, uh, losing the last game and now two one down in this series. And in the bottom right hand corner, we have the white Terran. N.W. Kogut currently in the lead after a shaky game one. He's uh, he's seems to be getting his form back. Yeah, um, yeah, he definitely has his form back. Going up two one here, and uh, of course, yeah, I, I lost my train of thought there. Elegant, what did you have to say? Right before. We yeah, is is I just feel like it's a really interesting subject. This this uh, this subject of how players sort of use either their star power. Or their or their income from the game and and how it can be applied. You know, someone like Love TV uh, can use their skill in bringing things together, and it often fascinates me and, and surprises me that the, the top players in in the Korean scene don't seem to feel the the urge to even do that. They seem to they seem to be very not insular because they're sociable people and they know one another, but they don't seem to have this the desire to to organize, and I yeah. find that really surprising. Yeah, you, you know what? It, it is a, a legitimate fear because working with Kim Chol Min, he says, you know, I worked with this major studio. I, I had I, I had all this experience as a caster, but I never really learned anything beyond actually casting the game. And yes. 
and, it, and it, it's it, it's interesting because I know as part of like my my working culture is that I find it important to learn how to do everybody else's job, even if I'm mm -hmm. not going to be doing that. Whether I'm going to be a manager or I'm I'm uh, I'm not going to be an artist, but I I do work with three artists, so I try and learn everything that they know. Um, so yeah. I'm wondering if there's this kind of like isolation mindset of what you work as in Korea. Yeah, perhaps, and, and there's also uh, I I know it's maybe not the not the best archetype, but there was that that thread a little while ago from uh, which largely involved a now banned Team Liquid user, a, a Korean fellow. I forget what his name was. But there was this very interesting mindset that he showed, um, it, it, particularly in relation to players' earnings. It was almost as if to question whether a player could do more for the scene with their earnings was an affront to the player who had earned that money in the first place. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and like both awesome. sides are, are very valid to argue, um, but but let's go ahead and, and discuss some things that are going on right now. Yeah, uh, quite absolutely. Quite a few zerglings are popping out right away. I, I want to actually pause real quick uh, because this is Kaiseris and, and actually translated here, it's uh, Toaster translates, black man asking if they played on this map and Kogut replies, uh, no. And, um, and Julia says, sure, you see more map. Um, but but this is important. <laughs> this is one of our new maps here, and so I'm just gonna do a full reveal so you guys can actually see the whole entire architecture of this map. And we're very fortunate because loser actually picks the map, and and so this is a, a, a map picked by Julia to see if he can take advantage of Koga in this situation. But it's a large four-player map, so even with this early Zergling rush, it's not going to be quite as effective. Very interesting map. I'm just having a look at the map overview now. Um, yeah, I've revealed it for myself as well. Yeah, fascinating. I would love to see how more games play out on this one. This is this is of course a foreigner map, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We have four foreigner maps, and and this is a really cool looking map. Like I was really excited when I saw it, and and I had only played a couple games on it uh, to this point because I'm so stretched for time as it is. But we do see that uh, five Zerglings coming down here right away. They're maybe just going to circumvent this bunker if they can. Going the long yeah. run. Yeah. It looks like they're going to try and do the same as they did last game. Just getting the, the slow lane run by. Might be able to pick off that SCV. Uh, almost. Not quite. The SCV does manage to get away. And Kogut now going to try and block the ramp very sensibly as well. But it looks like we may see a snipe on that command center. No, those Marines are going to be able to... Uh, going to be able to keep it up and, and the SCV very sensibly getting some more health on that thing but these marines are now getting a little bit caught by the, the yeah, that, that was a nice pick down. off on the marines i like that he threatened to take down that command center too so julia just trying to make uh, do with what he could uh, with those units across the map here but now the marines are starting to go hunting here and i wonder yes. if all players not being familiar with the map you know koga could be thinking again maybe there's an overlord that isn't in that sweet spot that prevents it from being targeted um, near my natural mm -hmm. base, so definitely uh, Kogi could get some early wins here if he can find some overlords. And to me, uh, honestly, that that just felt a bit impetuous from Julia. And this is something which is starting to show up in Julia's play uh, a, a few a few times over this series so far. Uh, his play just seems to be a bit impatient, a bit impetuous. He's a bit too apt to, to sort of rush in as he did there, when maybe sometimes it would be better just to, to hold off and to, to preserve the, those links for later rather than to throw them away on an endeavor, which which sort of works. Like, it's okay, you, you could delay the command center all right, but you could have done almost as much without pretty much losing any Zerglings and pulled them out. Because again, now we see that his scouting information is going to be lacking. And this is something which has troubled him. Uh, he, he's been short of scouting information and he hasn't been completely aware of where his opponents be. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, you know, it is it is tough. I try and always understand uh, the Zerg mindset early on in the game because as soon as your overlords can't get inside the base and you can't get a Zergling up there, how much information can you really get on a Terran opponent? Yes. Uh, but and it's, if you watch uh, pro games, so often you see Zergs, they stay really active with their Zerglings a long way into the as the mid game starts to take hold. You know, you've always got these speedlings sort of running around just trying to just trying to get as much info as you can uh, yeah, here on we your opponent. A, a starport coming down. So like like mm -hmm. you've been programmed to expect would be you know the five racks play four racks and then the fifth one that follows up 
Uh, but this is a quick to starport, and Koget loves, loves trying to fit a starport play in here to go up to a quicker Valkyrie. And that's why you get the armory that's coming up behind this mineral line inside the main base. Uh, meanwhile, uh, you know, it looks like Julius is just sticking to this game plan, not really sure, uh, not really noticing that Terran is going to be going down this route. Yeah, and of course, he's, he's not going to know. The only way he could know this right now. Is either sacrifice an overlord, not very nice, or to do a Ling Ren buy. Elegant, click on that lair. Oh, hello. Yeah, we let's click on that Hydralis dead now. Lurker Aspect is on the way. I was wondering, I didn't see that Spire. So we see Lurker Aspect. It was a later gas, I believe, at the natural base too. And I was wondering also why he's being so bold to bring the overlord down towards the south here. Sitting out two overlords. So he actually did lose that one at the natural base. Wanted to point that one out too. Um, so losing mm -hmm. one of his initial five overlords is always huge. Um, but on the other hand, we are going to see that drop lurker play is going to start coming into fruition. Yes, indeed. And it's such a coincidence that you were just talking about this before the game and saying how much you like this sort of thing. We do have overlord speed finishing now. Uh, so we will expect to, to see some uh, some lurker drops as we come into the mid game right here. Julia also looking like he's making ready to, uh, to put down a third base as well. Uh, combining it with with an aggressive play, and yeah, now but it's why though does Julia just give away the fact that he has fast overlords? Isn't exactly. This a big trigger to Koget. Exactly, and this is what I this is what I'm talking about. This is my issue with Julia. Like right there, it seems like he's he's desperate to get some scouting information. Okay, that's fine. I understand that, but. It, it, you know, any other way rather than revealing y your hand, your entire hand, like as he just did. Yeah, and and now we're actually seeing that, uh, and, and instead of going for like maybe a faster Valkyrie, which is what could have led to from that armory, because he sees that fast Overlord, he knows that it's not Muta's. He can build a dropship now and start getting aggressive, because he wants to be able to safely get his units across the map and start hitting uh, integral portions of that main base of Julius. Yep. Yep, and we've got the dropship now loading up, making ready to head out, and those marines at the front as well. Might like to see a few more bunkers though, uh, coming down from Koga, and here we go, we've got a marine pulling uh, and throwing down a second bunker, but the, the lurkers are crawling on forward, and Julia might be able to get there before there are enough bunkers finished, and he's going to oh, be able to start wow. sliding down the SCP as well, this is really troubling for Koga. Yeah, and, and this is really nice, patient lurker play. In between all the typing that Julia has been throwing out here, he is still being patient with his lurkers and trying to apply some uh, critical pressure. Yes, but he does not know about this dropship right here that's coming over towards his main. He does have some lurkers in, in some very opportune timing, which are going to finish just about as the as the marines unload from that dropship. But the dropship may be able to do something. He should have the vision, though. There was that overlord in a good scouting position here, but he's unloading all the marines are far away from the base they're gonna stim in and drone kills can happen right away here and that's the most important portion uh, that Koji can go for what I don't want Julius to do is unload these lurkers in of the oh god no but that's what I really don't want him to do which is just to lose him straight away in the overlord there's absolutely no need for that Julia throwing these away nice split right here from Koga and Julia splitting up his lurkers in a, in a rather crucial fashion and it looks like this lair is now in some serious trouble and Julia yeah. has no units for this to do he's got to get that lurker up and in range of those marines here but at least he's got the drone protected mineral line oh this is so bad this is so bad right now from Julia he could actually lose to this single drop. Oh, but imagine that some was nice a nice spikes. fine shot, though. The last couple hydralis popping out here, and it looks like he is gonna get his map or get his uh, main back under control here. Now, remember, he does have that third base established. There's not bio pressure coming out here, and and this is a uh, slightly due to the fact that it was a later four racks play because of this quick to start port uh, design that Koget was going for in this matchup. Yeah, um, so actually rather short on uh, on Marines right now for, for Koga. I don't see, did the dropship get out? I don't see the dropship right now. Yeah, the dropship went home. It had four vultures Oh yes. It, and, and then he just unloaded the four vultures instead of going off of them and saying, okay, I'm going to use my vultures for some quick scouts and uh, try and do some harassment here too. If he can dodge around these vultures at the top right, then he might be able to get a couple drum kills also. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be able to delay the mining on that gas, and that, that is quite nice for, for Koga to grab, uh, just slowing that gas mining down for, for Julia, and that, that is certainly impactful. 
Uh, meanwhile, Julia just making it more look as back as natural as well. And it's gonna be. Uh, a... I th I think he was suggesting that there was a map hack with that comment. <laughs> uh... Yeah, clearly Koget map hacks. That's why he has a, such a ridiculous TBZ record. No, this yeah. guy's just gold at this matchup here. Yeah, and yeah, Koga clearly has to be. Oh, beautiful drone grab right to the end there uh, to get one final kill. And this has really delayed Julia's uh, gas mining at his third base. So that, that was really, really efficient from Koga. And that's the kind of great thing. This is why a good player, you know, just, you know, he doesn't need map hacks because a good player can make two vultures pay even when a, a worse player just would, would have nothing to do with them. Really yeah, nice stuff. But we do have. Yeah. Base, getting a couple drones already, but he is threatening the main base also. Julia's got every worker pulled from every base right now, and this is just not good for him. Yeah, this is a really ugly situation for Julia. He's going to try and load up a drop of his own. He's going to go into the... Uh, with a couple of lurkers and a couple of hydrolysts as well. He is just about managing to clean out his uh, his mineral lines back at home as well. Here it so. comes though, the main base pressure. We're finally seeing these overlords actually uh, do some offensive attacking here, sparing a few lurkers. And they all might be able to get some solid kills behind this mineral line. What a pull yeah, from Kogit! Yeah, really nice pull. Of course, those, those hydrolysts just came out before the lurkers and just, uh, if anything, alerted Kogut just a little bit earlier than he would be as they started attacking the SCVs. So Kogut not losing really any SCVs to this, but it is delaying his mining quite significantly. He's going to have to use the siege tank to get back there uh, and take out yeah. these lurkers. He's going to be able to do that relatively easily, and he's not going to suffer too much damage from this. Julia just going to be able to delay things somewhat. Meanwhile, though, Kogut pushing across to the top right-hand corner with a large marine army, and once again, Julia's just not prepared for this at all. He has he has zero standing army, and he yeah, has nothing no with which to do with this. Either he hasn't been able to get to that hive tech yet which means that he would have to take the long way to be able to get over towards this base you know it, it it's really tough because he built so many drones over at this top right base knowing that that it is very exposed and koget is aware of where it is i'm surprised that he didn't try and take another hatchery uh, somewhere else across the map yeah yeah nice stuff and we have a, we had a drop there happening right in uh, in Julia's base, but the the Marines were were eventually taken out. But they did crucially manage to take down the evolution chamber while that was researching. So uh, the research didn't finish, uh, and now easily just going to be able to take out this top right hand base. That's going to go down uh, in, in a matter of seconds. Uh, and in come the Marines just taking down the drones. That's pretty ugly for Julia. He does have another third base. That's a mineral only third. He's he's lost a load of drones at the top right, and he's got nothing to populate that new third base with. And he has a relatively small army as well compared to the way things are going for, for Kogut. Um, so Kogut is starting to become in a really nice position at this point. He's got more siege tanks back at home too, ready to yeah, come. Yeah, yeah, he's looking really are. solid at this point, but um, you know, with the continued attacks here, with the, uh, the lurkers dropping from these overlords, it's making it tough. Actually, it's actually making this main base last longer on minerals because it is way over mining by these SCVs right now. He has 57 off two bases, so I think Koga's just saying he's going to win here. Again, like I said earlier, no, yeah, yeah. this is what he does. He just never takes a third base when he knows that he can win off two. And, oh, this is a march to victory against these lurkers. But has Koga overstretched himself? It looks like these look get right in on the siege tanks and are going to take out both of those siege tanks right here. So that is very unfortunate for, for Kogut's push. It's very difficult for him to get anything done without those. And now the Lurk is coming back up. This Lurk account is enough that he's able to straight up push this Kogut army back. Very, very surprising to see. But Julia, of course, needed that. Um, he Because he, his Defile attack is so far behind. He's still only on Lair. And he's just been rebuilding Evolution Chambers. So he needed that big army to be able to do some damage to, to Kogut's rolling ball of death. Yeah. We need, we need at this point to see Koga, if he wants to continue this game, to build another command center. He's dropping down factories. I mean, this is just a huge uh, resource hog right now. But he knows that factories are really going to need, uh, be needed for this uh, mid to late game transition. The two Evo chambers uh, have been added back up inside the main base here for, for Julia. So he's uh, performing well there and just continuing to get strong upgrades for his lurkers. But he's still not working towards Hive. He needs to make Hive happen. 
Yeah, he really does, and it's a matter of urgency as the siege tank ball grows. He did manage to take out a couple back there, but this is this is pretty ugly. You know, you kill two and six take their place. Um, so he's got a lot more work to do right here, and his army really hasn't grown by much. He's got some hydralists in there to snipe some science vessels and siege tanks, well, but I'm not to get sure. Pretty quickly, but as soon as these hydralists get hit by the tanks, that they're just evaporated. Yeah, and the lurkers are going to do the exact same. Julia just throwing in his army right here, but that's not make a dent in Kogut's force. And Kogut is going to be able to now push on unhindered. Oh, uh, what? 100% map hack. 100%. <laughs> and wow, that puts him up to a 3 1 lead against Julia. You know, it's, it's just... funny because last week Julia was the last person to add his name. Uh, to to the sign up sheet and it was in chat and I did I went to random.org and and uh, came up with the big the big uh, draw for for Julia to come and compete here sounded he sounded a lot more confident in chat than he is playing right now yeah sure his his play it just honestly doesn't seem up to the level of uh, of Kogut's play he's gonna have to do something a little bit sneakier uh, i mean i suppose that game he tried something sneaky but didn't bother to sneak it you know he, he showed his right. hand really really early on um which a crucial mistake because otherwise yeah it's a nice build it's a nice idea and it, it can be a nice way um to to grab an advantage against a, a superior player but he, he needs to be more patient i think he really needs to hold back his uh his urges a little bit all right let's see here i'm gonna go ahead and set up the next game ahead of time now let's learn a little bit more about julia because this